Hey everyone, back with another video. <clears throat> I wanted to um, demonstrate a few things about this probe today, um, which I've modified. This is a pickle probe, so-called, because of its shape for a CDV 700 Geiger counter, so that's some kind of like Cold War era tech, um, which is actually pretty cool and interesting. Um, but I'll kind of show a little bit about how I modified it, and I'll explain a bit more about the probe itself in a minute. But um, I've actually modified this probe to work with my Ludlum Model 3 Geiger counter, both the Civil Defense um, CDV700 and the Ludlum Model 3 run 900 volt tubes, which is great uh, because it means that I don't have to modify my Ludlum Model 3 to use this guy. Um, but what I've done here is there's actually the piece of a a piece of a body of like a bic pen here that was cut in to cut in the sections to allow me to solder a, uh, a one mega ohm resistor in line for the anode resistor for the tube here and it's a really super ugly splice um, but after having done the splice a couple of other times and broken the leads on the resistors um, I decided to just put a cubic buttload of tape on here. Which makes it look ugly but functional. Um, basically, it means that I can't like pull the cables apart or break the leads or break the connections to the leads. So that's great. Um, what I'll probably be doing here and there is um, pausing the video to like disassemble things because I'm recording one-handed. Um, so you know I'll need to be able to do things with two hands. So you might see me pause here and there. But um, as you can see here, I've modified this guy to have a BNC connector and a BNC cable on one end, um, you know, so that I can plug it into various things. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to pause real quick and do a quick tear down of this probe and explain some of the really cool properties of it. So be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Taking it apart now. So um, I guess I'll start by showing you guys the base of the probe here um, and the Geiger Mueller tube. This is a uh, Victorine OCDD-103 um, Geiger tube. Um, one of the many Geiger tubes that were actually um, designed to work with the CDV-700. But basically, it's got three pins um, in the bottom of it that insert into a socket at the base of the, hol at the holder. And this holder basically has, or the base of the uh, probe actually has a bunch of threads that the top goes into. And this is actually the top, right? So you can actually see that it rotates and gives the open window there and then if you rotate it the same direction again it'll lock. Um, so kind of the way that this works is this is actually a nickel plated brass um, set of tubes um, like so there's like the main there's like a protective housing and then a uh, sleeve that slides over it and the sleeves what rotates um, but anyway so this nickel plated brass has a really cool property. Um, and basically that property is that this gives it um, what's called energy compensated properties um, for gamma particles. So um, the way it usually works with Geiger tubes is that they'll respond more heavily to low energy gamma particles than higher energy gamma particles. And so what this kind of does is it blocks a bunch of the lower level ones and allows like a lot of the higher level ones or higher energy ones through, um, which gives the effect of um, kind of evening out what you would call the response curve. Um, and you can actually Google that, like a gamma energy response curve for various probes to see what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, so this thing's pretty cool. I'm gonna try and take this apart here with one hand. There we go. And show you how it works. Now you can actually see that here you have um, the actual window on the housing for the probe or on the like the base part of the tube and then here's the sleeve and then you can actually see in the middle there this little guy here is what locks it um, and if you look at the bottom of this whole assembly you can actually see the tracks where that little locking mechanism snaps for the probe to be open or closed so that's pretty cool or for the beta window to be open or closed anyway I'm going to try to uh, fix this real quick and then I'll show you some of the features of the tube um, in relationship to this window. Okay, and back. So, uh, kind of an interesting thing about this Geiger Mueller tube that you'll notice is that there's this sort of like thinner area here um, versus the thicker area. And this is so actually when the gamma probe is, or when the beta shield is open, like this beta window here, um, beta particles 
um, of lower energy can more readily penetrate the tube. That's why this area is much thinner, is because uh, that way it won't block as many betas so that they can get through and be registered by the tube. Um, so that's kind of a neat feature. And then when this is closed, that obviously doesn't matter because there aren't going to be a lot of beta particles penetrating this. Um, some really high energy betas might penetrate the nickel and brass, but um, most of them will be blocked by this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the sucker back together and um, hook it up to the Geiger counter. So, okay, cool. So now we have the probe connected to my Ludlow Model 3, which I will go ahead and fire up and put on the times one scale for detecting particles. And um, you'll notice that I'm not getting a lot of counts. It's maybe one every few seconds with the beta shield closed. So I'm going to go ahead and open that, open the beta shield. And usually, it won't be many more counts, but you'll usually get a couple more um, here and there, just because the betas are being allowed through. Oh yeah, you can already hear that. You know, the time that we got one, we're now getting like three to four. Um, but anyway, so I kind of wanted to show you guys, I'm going to measure three samples I have. Um, one of them is a cesium-137 disc, um, the other is a radium toggle switch, and some depression glass. So... I'm basically going to scan those samples with the beta shield open and close. So I'm going to go ahead and close it first. And we'll do one sample at a time with the beta shield closed. So, is it closed? And you can see that we're getting, yeah, maybe 250 counts a minute of just gamma particles from the uh, from the radium coated toggle switch. It's got radium 226 in it. So now we'll try the um, depression glass and we're not actually I'm gonna move this away so we're not getting counts from it. But yeah you can see the depression glass really you know isn't even registering um, and that's because this is mostly emitting alpha and beta particles. And the beta particles are generally not energetic enough to penetrate the shield. So, we'll put that guy off to the side here. Oops. And now, we'll grab the cesium-127 disc. Um, so this is cesium-127, it's an alpha, or sorry, 137, I apologize. This is an alpha, or sorry, this is a beta and gamma emitter, um, sealed in plastic. And this guy's gonna give a lot more counts than either of the other two samples. Um, both beta and gamma. So I'll just scan this with the beta shield closed. See, and we're up to yeah, we're up somewhere in the neighborhood of like 500 counts per minute of gamma coming off of this guy. And this is um, a one micro Curie cesium-137 sample. Get the probe. Oh, there we go. Get the probe a little bit closer. There we go. Get a bit closer to a thousand counts a minute. So that's cool. So now I'm gonna start in reverse order with the beta shield open. So, boom, open the beta shield. Now we'll be able to detect betas and gammas coming from our samples and the natural ambient background radiation. So, look at that. So we've actually exceeded 5,000 counts per minute when we're also able to measure the betas and this tube is actually going to be more beta responsive than gamma responsive just because beta particles are more energetic and more readily interact with matter and gas. Um, yeah, because they carry a positive electrical charge whereas um, gamma particles don't carry any electrical charge. So now we'll take our depression glass. Yeah, see we get a few counts there. Not a whole lot, but still some. It actually registers. Now, try the same test with our radium-226. Uh-huh. A lot more activity. So, anyway, so that kind of goes to show you, like, kind of a little bit about this probe and what happens when the beta shield uh, is open and closed and why you might want to do that. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool probe. Um, I'll probably use it a little bit here and there. Um just to play with or test things. But anyway, kind of a nice, fun piece of history that uh, we're able to bring back to life with, you know, some old, some resistors and some electrical tape and piece of cable. Anyways, cheers, guys.